This is a picture test in practical histology of the gastrointestinal tract. You may use the video as a revision for the topic or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, pause the video at the beginning of each slide and take your time in reading the question and coming up with the answer, then replay the video to confirm your answer and listen to further comments and explanations. Given this is a portal triad, which of the structures A, B, or C is originally a branch of the abdominal aorta give two obvious reasons. Now, portal tracts are positioned at the angles of the hexagon of the hepatic lobule. If this is the hexagon of the hepatic lobule, this is the uh, central vein, and the portal tracts are located at the angles of the hexagon. A portal tract contains three main structures, hence the name portal triad. It contains a terminal of the portal vein, a terminal branch of the hepatic artery, and a bile ductule, or a tributary of the bile duct. They also contain lymphatic vessels, but since the wall of lymphatic vessels are delicate and often collapsed, they are less easily identified. The circular profile A is lined by simple cuboidal epithelium, so it's not a vessel, but a bile duct. B and C are vascular profiles, since they are lined by endothelium, which is a simple squamous epithelium. Remember here, the liver has a dual blood supply from the portal vein and from the a hepatic artery. The portal vein brings the blood that is contains the products of digestion, that, while the hepatic artery brings the blood that is rich in oxygen. The hepatic artery is a branch of the celiac trunk, which is a branch of the abdominal aorta. B is the artery. It has a smaller size and thicker wall compared to the adjacent branch of the portal vein in C, and you can see here that C has a thin wall because of that, it has a distorted shape. While the artery has a thicker wall, and the wall contains more muscle fibers, more elastic fibers, so it appears more uniform and not distorted. So being lined by endothelial cells and not cuboidal cells, so it's not a duct, having a thick wall, uniform in shape, then it's an artery. These are the two reasons that can differentiate this circular profile as an artery of the portal triad. Identify the type of epithelial lining, A, name the structure, B. In the wall of this structure, we can notice three layers, mucosa, muscularis, and adventitia. So it doesn't look like it has the classical features of the gut tube. It lacks a muscularis mucosa and submucosa. In addition, if you look at the muscularis layer, the smooth muscle fibers in the muscularis layer are arranged in different directions, multiple directions, longitudinal, transverse, and oblique, and so they do not segregate into two distinct layers like elsewhere in the gut tube. This arrangement conforms to the necessity of mass contraction to reduce the size of the organ rather than peristalsis. In fact, this is the wall of the gallbladder. The gallbladder is a muscular sac that concentrates and stores the bile. When it contracts, it expels the bile into the duodenum. The epithelium is formed of simple, very tall columnar cells with basally located nuclei, as you can see them in A. Because it concentrates bile, then it needs a mechanism for absorption. So there are numerous short apical microvilli and these cells, in fact, they closely resemble the absorptive cells of the small intestine, but we don't have goblet cells here. In the non-distended state, as we can see here, the mucosa is thrown up into many folds, and these mucosal folds might resemble the villi of the small intestine, but they vary in size and shape, and they display an irregular arrangement and disappear, as I mentioned, when the gallbladder becomes distended. Diverticuli, or crypts, form deep indentations in the mucosa, like the one that is shown in B here. Sometimes, deep crypts might extend through the muscularis externa as well. This is not shown in this section. We can only see the diverticulum in the mucosa. The presence of deep diverticuli is not considered by itself 
abnormal, but it can foretell some pathological changes. Bacteria might accumulate in these sinuses and cause chronic inflammation, which is a risk factor for formation of gallstones. This is an exocrine glandular tissue. Identify the structures indicated by the asterisk in the three sections and which one of these three sections represents a submandibular salivary gland. The three sections show the general architecture of the major salivary glands, exocrine glands. Each is divided into lobules and the lobules uh, contain many of the secretory units, the SINI. Uh, supporting tissue, connective tissue septa are represented by the asterisks. The connective tissue is located between the lobules. They extend from an outer capsule. You can see here a fibrous tissue capsule. And uh, this is a septum extending into, this is another septum here, interlobular septa. These connective tissue septa, they convey the uh, blood vessels and ducts, as you can see them here. The gland A is mainly serous. These serous cells, they uh, stain red and the secretory granules are visible. This is the parotid gland. It is mainly, almost exclusively serous. The mucus secreting cells in um, gland B are pale because the mucus they contain is not stained. So the mucus SINI are in certain places, they are surrounded by serous demilunes. So this one is mainly mucus, but as you can see here and there, very few darkly stained uh, serous demilunes can be seen. This is another one here. Gland B is the sublingual gland. It contains predominantly mucus secreting SINI, which are lightly stained in contrast to the serous SINI of the parotid gland in A. In addition, in the serous SINI, you can see that the nucleus is flattened toward the base, while the nuclei of the serous SINI are rounded. C represents a submandibular gland. It consists of a mixture of serous and mucus secretory units. The serous units are darkly stained and the mucus units are lighter stained. Cells of which zone are the first to show ischemic necrosis and the first to receive toxins? This section shows multiple hepatic lobules. These lobules, they have a hexagonal shape, roughly. And you can see there's an outline of connective tissue here. There is a central vein and uh, there is a portal triad. Multiple, actually, portal triads are, can be seen at the angles of the hexagon. The portal uh, tract containing the three structures, portal vein, hepatic artery, and uh, a tributary of the bile duct. Remember that the uh, liver has a dual blood supply from the portal vein and the hepatic artery. The hepatic artery provides the oxygen-rich blood and the portal vein provides the blood that is rich in the uh, absorbed material to be stored or processed in the liver. Blood, whether arterial or venous, passes from the periphery of the hepatic uh, lobule to the central vein through the sinusoids, which are present in between the cords, hepatic cords. And by this way, the hepatocytes are flushed with this blood. Zone 1, which is located at the periphery of the hepatic lobule, is closest to the portal tract, and therefore it receives the most oxygenated blood, while zone 3, which surrounds the central vein, being farthest from the portal tract, it receives the least oxygen. Zone 3 is thus the most susceptible to ischemic injury. According to the same principle, cells in zone 1 are the first to receive toxins from the blood and exposed to the effect of toxic substances. Adding to that, and according to the same principle, cells of zone 1 are the last to die if the circulation is impaired because they receive the most oxygen. They are also, for the same reason, cells in zone 1 are the cells that first regenerate. Bile flows 
in an opposite direction. So it will pass through a network of biliary canaliculi, not sinusoids, but it reaches a bile duct in the portal triad and carries the bile in the opposite direction of the blood from the liver to the duodenum. Thus, when there is a biliary obstruction, for example, a, a stone in the common bile duct, for example, then the cells of zone 1 are the first to show the morphological uh, changes because of the bile duct obstruction, because they are closer to the tributary of the bile duct, which is located in the portal triad. Identify the formations A and B, and also identify the structures indicated by the star. This is a section of the tongue. Note that uh, it's a muscular organ, specifically uh, this is shown in the section on the left hand side. The muscle mass is formed by interlacing bundles of skeletal muscle fibers. Uh, so they are, as you can see them here, they are sectioned in different orientations. The mucosa is formed into papillae, which are shown in A and in B. They have different shapes. The filiform papillae, which are most numerous in A, and among them, scattered here and there, are more globular in shape, the fungiform papillae in B. Now going to the second section on the left side, the lighter stained structures present in the epithelium and indicated by the asterisk are taste buds. They are, as you can see, they are barrel-shaped structures and they open at the surface via a small pore. They contain spindle-shaped cells, lightly stains, which are the gustatory cells, as well as some uh, supporting dark stained cells.